Arsenal negotiating for both James Madison and Martin Odegaard. 13 days left of the transfer window. Is it going to be James Madison or is it going to be Martin Odegaard? Well, today we will find out what the AFC Bell has been saying. Also, are Arsenal back in for a certain Aaron Ramsdale? Let's find out in today's episode of The Transfers FC. Yo, what is going on guys, my name is Babs14 and welcome back to your boy's channel. As per, you guys know the business, if you enjoy, make sure to go down there and smash a like on the video. And while you're down there, please do consider subscribing to the boy's channel, as we are on the road to the big old 60,000 subscribers. But let's get into the Arsenal transfer news and starting off with James Madison. Yesterday, it was being reported that Martin Odegaard was closing into signing for Arsenal as Arsenal advanced negotiations with Real Madrid. But today is the big Madison transfer come back to life well what exactly has the AFC Bell been saying the AFC Bell says that Arsenal will ramp up their efforts to sign James Madison for the remainder of the transfer window, with official communication between the two clubs expected to gain upward momentum very soon. The AFC Bell with an RKL out of nowhere says that Arsenal are looking to heat up the negotiations, the communications with Leicester City for James Madison, and whether this means if Arsenal are going to put forward an official bid for the player. The fact that he says that both clubs expect upward momentum says to me that agreement could potentially, if things go to play, and be reached. The AFC Bell also says Arsenal is working to make progress on the deal for Martin Odegaard at the same time as James Madison. In anticipation of any hurdles or deadlocks the club might face in trying to reach an agreement with Leicester, but Madison remains the number one target. Both players being negotiated at the same time. Well, well, well. I think what the Bell was trying to say is that Arsenal don't want to sign both players. Arsenal will not sign Odegaard and Madison. It's more that this is the strategy of Arsenal's technical director Edu Gaspar in trying to sign one of the two players. And to add to that, the AFC Bell says sources familiar with the club's thinking say that Arsenal sees it as having all the power in negotiations with Real Madrid for Martin Odegaard, the preferred option after Madison, which gives the club ample room to discuss the possibility of signing the number one target. Target Madison. Real Madrid have made it very obvious to Arsenal that Odegaard is available for a transfer. The fact that they have given Odegaard's number 21 shirt to Rodrigo, as well as not including Odegaard in their matchday official squad, they have essentially given Arsenal all the power in negotiations because Arsenal know the player wants to go and the player needs to be sold by Real Madrid if they want to sign Kylian Mbappe. And this will allow Arsenal to negotiate a better deal for themselves, whether it's loan with the obligation to buy or a better transfer fee if Arsenal do in fact sign Martin. Odegaard, but that power also gives Arthur the time to also negotiate at the same time for James Madison, and let's just say things weren't to go through with Madis, Arthur would already have the Odegaard deal ready there, set and lined up, so Arthur can sign Odegaard and end their pursuit of a brand new attacking midfielder, and they don't have to waste any time. Now this could be an Edu Gaspar masterclass if things work out, but if things weren't to work out, it could also be an Edu Gaspar disaster class. Dean's shown soccer on Odegaard on the football terrace. There is the potential they can do a loan. Rumor that I'm told are open to it. Arteta absolutely loves him. Just to take on the wages for the season and not a significant fee and the option to buy him next year. A loan with an option to buy could be a perfect transfer for Martin Odegaard because if Arthur were to take him all the options to buy, if he comes into Arthur, does arrive, nothing special, Arthur don't have to sign him on a permanent transfer, I can let him go back to Real Madrid on a free and don't waste any money but if things work out for Odegaard he does the bits Arthur can then sign him on a permanent transfer and Arsenal will be able to negotiate for this because they have the power in the negotiations as it stands with Real Madrid. We've seen it in the past with Arsenal ourselves with Granit Xhaka and Hector Bellerin but this time me amigos the tables have turned. According to Fabrizio Romano Martin Odegaard is the obsession of Arsenal and they want him. Madison is an option as well if they can't get him. I respect Fabrizio massively but, thing, I respect Fabrizio massively, but things here are not making any sense. If James Madison is indeed the backup to Martin Odegaard, why would you have a player double the price tag of Martin Odegaard at £60 million as a backup option for a player who's cheaper and also available? Because as it stands, Leicester don't want to sell Madison, but Real Madrid do want to sell Odegaard. And so if there was to be a backup here, it would be Odegaard for Madison and not vice versa. But as things stand for me, I still think Odegaard to Arsenal is a more likely transfer. But at the same time, here's to hoping for James Madison. And here's to hoping the AFC Bell can provide us with a 
moment of magic, a top yard screamer. Because if Madison signs for Arsenal, let me just get it clear, AFC Bell deserves a statue outside the Emirates Stadium. But what do you guys think is going to happen? And what are your guys' predictions for the transfer window? Is it going to be Odegaard and Fabrizio or the AFC Bell and James Madison? Okay, let's move on to Aaron Ramsdale. This was a transfer that was meant to be off. It was over by this while we still discussing this guy. Well, it seems like this transfer has risen like the Undertaker and we are seeing a Aaron Ramsdale transfer or a Montada. As the Gunner blog via The Athletic today has confirmed that Arsenal and Sheffield United have indeed resumed talks about resurrecting a deal for Aaron Ramsdale. Sheffield United have lowered the demands, negotiations are delicate and the outcome is uncertain but now there is some optimism and agreement may be reached. Aaron Ramsdale to Arsenal as it stands is back on my friends. And you know what, this is why credit must go to the AFC belt because he called it spot on when the rumours came out the deal was off. As he reported that a source in Arsenal declined to confirm the news upon the club's withdrawal from the deal permanently upon inquiry on urgent reports that followed the meeting which raised the suspicion that the club had other aims for these leaks. Sheffield United are still apprehensive and ready for another try from Arsenal in the remaining time in the market. So the AFC bell was bang on there. These were leaks that Arsenal put out themselves and what they were trying to do is to load the demands of Sheffield United and force the hand of the club and the player and that my friends is exactly what's happened in this transfer saga. As even Chris Wheatley has confirmed that Arsenal are once again pushing aside and Ramsdale talks have reopened and there is a renewed confidence a deal can be done before the end of the window. A potential deal is likely to be around £20 million plus add-ons which Sheffield United keen to sell the goalkeeper this summer. £20 million is a price tag less than what Sheffield United wanted in the past and the reason why they are keen to sell the goalkeeper is because Aaron Ramsdale himself is trying to push through and force a transfer having put forward an official transfer request. And this was confirmed by the Sheffield United boss Slavica Johankovic who confirmed that Aaron Ramsdale wants to join Arsenal, he's natural that he wants to be a Premier League player, I am in talks with him, he believes it can be a good move for himself, I understand that Arsenal are interested, but this is the business. So the fact that Ramsdale has pushed for this transfer and put forward a transfer request has now lowered the price demands of Sheffield United and means that an agreement for Ramsdale to Arsenal is looking more and more likely as it stands. What the Scooby-Doo is happening in this transfer window, eh? Even Fabrizio Romano on Ramsdale says they are still negotiating they want to sign the player but are not willing to pay more than 21 to 22 million pounds. They are trying to find an agreement. The player is desperate to join Arsenal. And so basing off the reports today, Ramsdale to Arsenal is certainly back into ignition. Now if Arsenal were to spend over 20 million pounds on what is going to be a backup goalkeeper to Bert Leno, that surely confirms that Arsenal have money to spend. And if Arsenal were to then come out and say, listen, we can't afford James Madison because he's too expensive, then why would you spend 20 plus million pounds on a backup dancing goalkeeper to Bert Leno. And as LT Arsenal says it, Arsenal have spent in total £150 million in transfer fees since Mikel Arteta took over in December 2019. If Arsenal were to sign on Ramsdale, it would be close to £180 million, where you're yet to spend a single pound in transfer fees on an attacking player. When Mikel Arteta came in, yes, defence was an issue, and to be fair to him, factly, we are a better team when it comes to clean sheets and goals conceded, but at the same time, the attack is the biggest issue for Arsenal Football Club as last year we were in the mid-table region when it came to chances created and big chances created. And so with Arsenal having dropped 50 M's on a centre back and a 20 M's on a backup goalkeeper, and so far so we are still yet to sign an attacking midfielder, which in my opinion was an obligation for Arsenal to sign at the start of the transfer window. But what are your own thoughts on Aaron Ramsdale to Arsenal's transfer being back on? And are you for it or are you still against it like your boy in my opinion? Fabrizio Romano has confirmed that Manuel Locatelli to Juventus is a done deal confirmed. Here we go. Total agreement completed with Sassuolo for 35 million euros plus add-ons and a contract until June 2026. Manuel Locatelli is now officially off the transfer market and the fact that Arsenal are going to give Xhaka a brand new contract means that Arsenal as it stands are not going to sign a brand new central midfielder. But my question to you Arsenal fans watching this video is when Thomas Partey is fully fit and available, who should be Arsenal's starting two central midfielders. Is it Sambi Lekonga and Partey, Partey and Xhaka, Xhaka and Lekonga? What combination should be Arsenal starting midfield pairing? 
Fabrizio Romano confirms that Barcelona have no interest in Pierre and Aubameyang confirmed. He is not even a target for Barca, no swap deal with Felipe Coutinho. Well that was pretty quick, as Fabrizio put an end to Aubameyang leaving Arsenal expected to Barcelona, but in terms of the Arsenal captain, he is still under massive pressure to deliver at Arsenal Football Club. And so my question to you guys is, what are your realistic targets for Pierre and Aubameyang in terms of goals this season in the Premier League? as in my opinion we need to see a massive Aubameyang remontada. Okay then moving on to the other Arsenal news today and starting off we have an update from last week's game against Brentford as things went down before the game. As Sammy Mockbill of the Daily Mail has confirmed, the Premier League's curtain raiser at Brentford last Friday was hours from being postponed after Arsenal's entire travelling party had to take Covid tests before kickoff. And essentially this has confirmed that Aubameyang and Lacazette were out via Covid and this has also raised concerns to how they got Covid in the first place and did they break the rules of the club's restrictions with the whole COVID-19 pandemic. But again, this is not Conspiracy Theories FC and so I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt to Batman and Lacazette as they are Arsenal players and there's nothing more I can say. But in terms of both players, the Times have said that Arsenal are likely to be without Batman and Lacazette via illness for the Chelsea game. The club will assess them next week. Our captain and our centre forward both out for the Chelsea game potentially and if that is to be the case, who is going to be the Arsenal centre forward? Is it going to be young Florian Balogun? Is it going to be Gabriel Martinelli? Or could we even see a false nine from Mikel Arteta, dare I say? This my friends, I'll leave to you guys the answer down below in the comments. Who would you guys like to see as Arsenal starting centre forward against Chelsea on Sunday? As it looks like it's going to be a very very sticky occasion. Fabrizio Romano says that Edu is working with Arteta, there is no internal fights. We need to give Arteta some time and let's see what happens in October, November. Let's give them time. Time and patience, Fabrizio. Us Arsenal fans are tired. We were all told that this was going to be a massive transfer for Arsenal, and so far, so we've only signed one first team player. Having lost the first game of the season, we now have the European champions followed by the Premier League champions. And so how much more time can we give to Arteta and Edu Gaspar? But in terms of the Arsenal technical director, you have less than 13 days to get a goalkeeper, a right back, an attacking midfielder and a centre forward over the line, as well as getting rid of certain Deadwood as well. But how many players do you guys think that Arsenal will sign before the end of the transfer window? But that is the video then there. If you guys have enjoyed, make sure to go down there and smash a like on the video. And while you're down there, please do consider subscribing to the boys channel. If you want to follow your boy on the social medias then the links will be down below in the description but that was the latest episode of the transfers fc is it going to be james madison is it going to be martin odegaard arsenal i'm waiting i'm patient by some players anyways guys i will see you guys soon in a bit